Hello, today it's a new release of my quad sim which still doesn't have a name other than it's a free FPV quad sim and I want us just to run through the changes I've made this time, what you can expect from it and things to look out for. So, starting off, if you've played the sim before you will notice this dialogue. As soon as you start the, uh, the game up you'll get this uh, resolution cho uh, chooser where you can change the graphics quality, decide if it's Windows and on some versions of the OS you can decide if it's going to show again. The problem I had with this, apart from being a bit sort of janky, you know, most commercial games would never say, see this, if you go to the input section you could try and do things with it and people would manage to screw up the config. Um, so that's bad. So I had to take that out. So what I've done now is actually put that inside the sim itself. Okay, so if I open the program now, uh, and I've previously had it as a, a window, and we hit escape, we've got this new uh, thing called system config and setup. From there, I can change my graphics level, uh, ultra, I can change the resolution, super tiny, or uh, much bigger. And this will basically look at your graphics card you've got and decide what applicable resolutions you had. You can change it to full screen, um, you can go back, um, and there's another important setting in there which is restore default settings. So the restore default settings is pretty much what it what it says but it also do the extra thing of deleting your save data. Previously when I've had to tell people to remove their save data because they might have had a setting that's been screwed up there, on Windows I've had to tell them to go and go into registry edit and, and do it that way which is a bit scary for people. Uh, so this should clear that up but the fact you now can't get to the input settings should uh, in theory mean that there's there's no dodgy data that could get in there. Um, if you do uh, restore default settings what it will say is it pop up this warning because one of the things it will do is remove any joystick maps and calibration data from the saved area and and what's currently there so it just wipes everything puts it back to absolute original settings uh, but it may be useful if you've forgotten what you've done, you've changed some settings up or something's not reacting quickly and if you've ever messed with that input setting on that I'd recommend you go and do this on the new version and then sort of start afresh so you, you know you're good. You'll notice also in this we've got this thing called hide props from view which is literally as it says. Now I was doing some debug, you see at the moment we've got props, we'll just take off a second we'll see them. So. Yeah, the, the, as for debug I wanted to take the props out of the view and I figured they'd be quite useful for people that didn't like them. I kind of like them as a sort of context thing, they're not quite right. I wanted to do something with the shader that sort of produces the props out at a slight angle because of the distortion of the camera, but I haven't done that yet. So for people that don't like props in view, and I know there's plenty, click that box and you know, you're prop free. You can just pretend you're flying an H quad or something like that essentially. Uh, but that's that bit. I should just mention, um, first time you run this, if you haven't set it up before, the resolution, if you're wondering, will go to the native resolution of your display before you can go in and, and change it again. But that should all be okay and, and useful. I, I feel it's more useful this way because if you wanted to go and test it with another detail setting or test it with another resolution, you had to go out, go into the launcher, redo it. With this one, you can you know flick back and forth from full screen, change resolutions and detail settings very quickly. So hopefully you'll find the ideal settings depending on your system. And I know there's there's a whole bunch of people on really old systems managing to run this okay. But obviously the guys on new systems can uh, really enjoy themselves and let loose with the graphic details and the, the resolution if they want to. So in terms of uh, other things, there's a, a few things you probably won't notice. There's a, a bunch of sorting out things on the UI. If you've ever gone to this section before, in an aspect ratio like 4.3 you would notice that the graphic gets screwed up and some of the bits and pieces with the labels gets uh, messed up. Uh, that's all sorted now so no matter what resolution you're in, no matter what aspect ratio you're in, the, the UI stuff should be very uh, consistent and everything should be in the same area. Uh, if it's not let me know obviously. Somebody suggested um, having some trees as a slalom course that they didn't like the racing course and I thought well that's not a bad idea, it's quite easy. I think it was Ched. If it was you Ched thanks for that uh, suggestion and I'll show you where they are. Just generally just a line of trees now on this little mountainside. Uh, so you've got these sort of oak style trees over here and you can sort of use these other ones to slalom around which uh, you know gonna help you flying. I feel it's more interesting than doing a race course and I'm using these ones at the end and you can kind of orbit back around there 
and uh, go in and do some more that way and try not to hit them. So I asked you last time, what would you like to see me do next? And I gave you the option of like uh, switches on the radio to do things like flipping over and resetting of the quad, line of sight, uh, pre-determined uh, rates to help people out that are on like uh, PlayStation controllers and things and all beginners that don't know beta flight settings very well. And overwhelmingly, you wanted some sort of vehicles in the game. Now I decided to put cars in the game because I thought that would be easiest. Is it easier? I'm still not sure. You have to think about the wheels on the floor and how they react to stuff and things, but that's what we've got. So we've got a new menu screen, which is accessible through this, this game screen that we're in now. If we hit space, we're into something called the scenarios menu. Um, and from here, you can basically, the, the, the idea is to expand this. So at the moment we've just got cars, so it's just set up for cars. But if we had like planes and quads and we had other things, we'd be able to scroll through them. But right now, you can see our current uh, scenario is none. I call it none or fun flight. That's essentially just flying around the landscape. We've got a little oval, we've got a figure eight, we've got some guy called the massive eight. Uh, and then we've got a number of cars on the screen and they go from uh, of values of slow, medium, fast. And I've put up to three cars. I, I limited it to three because I wasn't sure how it was gonna cope with older systems. Uh, also, as soon as you start getting past five, there's a bit of carnage. It's mostly about cars crashing into one another. You could call it AI or you could call it artificially stupid or legitimately stupid. They, they do smash into each other quite a lot as soon as you get them going um, quicker. But I'll show you how this works. So let, let's start with, um, I'll, I'll, I'll use free cars because it's more fun. But generally speaking, the, the slower you are, the more the cars bunch up. And as you get faster, they spread out a bit. Now I've given each of the cars, they're all slightly different in their geometry um, their handling and some of their settings towards like downforce and top speed and all this and they've got a little bit of random elements about how they steer and, and go things. The idea is to try and make it slightly less computerized and give them more of a human flavor. Not just a human flavor, as soon as you put the speed up it's like the drunken humans driving around fast cars. But let's let's show you this. So we'll go slow speed first and we'll go small oval. So the idea is you, you click on one of these things, you'll see the selected um, scenario down the bottom at, uh, instead of your, your one you're currently flying and then you just click on launch relaunch I say relaunch because if you started this and then you're like oh my controller wasn't plugged in but they've all driven away you can just go back to it and say I'd like to relaunch that and then you'll be there so in a slow mode uh, using this small oval circuit the cars are, are pretty slow um, one of the things I really need to know from you guys on lower spec machines uh, I haven't any problems here. What I've done, I've put uh, particle emitters on to give us those um, those little dust trails going on because of course we're driving over the desert. But if that's you know slowing down older systems, I can put options to turn these off. But it certainly gives it more of a, a real feel and it's nice and easy to spot them from a mile away. So yeah, this is this is okay. I, you know, I spent a lot of time going around with this, but it really is pretty slow. But you know, it's gonna get you uh, into it. You, you can get pretty close to them and you can get the hang of, of chasing. But for me, I like high speed, um, big circuits. So my favorite is I built this one called the Massive 8. And the idea is to use as much of the landscape as possible. That said, I'm only on this um, small area. So we'll launch this one. Uh, and the cars are in a sort of fast mode now and they start getting, you know, a little bit aggressive with each other and start hitting things. And there's a lovely uh, sort of straight here. So you can really get the hang of, of getting very close. You can you can try and land on them if you like. Um, yeah, the, the high speed stuff's really good fun. And what I did, I did some terrain alterations here. You'll notice we've got some hills floating about because I thought the desert was a little bit boring. So I put some lumps and bumps in because if there's one thing that these cars um, really do act as a randomizer. It's having little lumps and bumps and jumps to jump over uh, to really sort of even out the performance. Some, someone gets ahead and then they'll spin out like both of these cars just span. And uh, yeah, it, it gives the guy in last place the opposition the, the, the opportunity to catch up again. Uh, the idea originally was to go with a sort of drift car thing. I started working on it, but that's that's something that's going to take a while to to get going so at the, what I ended up doing is just having cars that could jump around that could you know slide and spin out and things 
Uh, so I figure more than like you're trying to go around a drift circuit, let's imagine you're on some sort of Paris Dakar type rally where you're trying to really nail these guys down and get some some good footage. Again, there's there's loads to learn here if you're new, how to keep your speed, how to sort of slow down without overshooting, keeping your subject in view, trying to get different sorts of views, uh, seeing what works, that sort of thing. So yeah, hopefully that'll be good fun to play. I've really actually enjoyed messing around with this, just chasing these cars around, uh, making them go ridiculous uh, ways and going underneath them when they're jumping, stuff like that. Uh, and what I've carried on with is the idea of rather than having lots of different types of courses you know one for cars and one for racing that sort of stuff is that I've carried on with this one single landscape and I've just put stuff in there uh, I was going to get rid of the race course to do this but it's like it fits around it fits around the city um, originally I was going to put the cars in the city but then it's like that's a really small little track and you'd have to go really slow uh, so it was more fun doing it this way. So that's the major update for this one. In terms of what I'm going to do next, um, obviously I had some remaining things left and if you look at the GitHub site for the issues, links down below as usual, you'll see all the little bits and pieces I'm working on. What I want to look at next is a couple of bugs I found, some really weird ones. You may have noticed in the screen capture video, occasionally there's a little sort of, little. it looked like a little black blob that would just flash up occasionally, a little artifact there. Um, I'll, I'll give you a screenshot of what these look like and they don't always appear in the same spot. I haven't tracked it down, I don't know if it's just on Mac or other uh, systems as well. Let me know if you're seeing this or not seeing that, if you're running on Windows or Linux. And this artifact, it comes from the fact that we've got two cameras overlaying one another. I found that out. At first I thought it was the props leaving some sort of artifact behind uh, and that's why I had the actual option to turn the props off and then I found it's not that. But if I turn one of the cameras off, it went away. But at the same point I, I then I couldn't render very close stuff or I could have the shadows flickering again which isn't good so I really want to track that one down and get rid of it because it's really distracting when I just notice everything's looking fine except this little thing that keeps popping up every now and then and I want to sort a couple of uh, handling issues out I found this line of code that just said velocity equals 30 which was there from like my original very early prototype stages and it's still used in the calculation. This gets in the multiplier when it tries to work out the velocity of each of the x, y, z directions. I was like, why have I got some value in there I don't know about? I, the What I want to do is, is have a look at motor data and see how it works. There's probably a, a, a curve which is like the power. It's, it's not a straight linear line I don't think so I'd, I'd like to find out to give a better throttle response at the moment you will notice that you'll have to up the throttle multiplier quite a bit um, I was going to come back and, and look at this for this release and then I discovered I, I had some old values in there so I, I'd probably go for it anyway I'm flying at around 2.4 which is too high on the top end speed have an experiment it see what you think the high ones or the low twos is probably going to give you a good response but yeah i i need to sort out a couple of bugs there's another one with uh multiple joysticks being detected like if you're on a windows box and it decides something that you've got connected to the system as a joystick it won't then offer you if you plug your controller in because it always looks for the first joystick so i need to give something to choose a joystick because it turns out that things that aren't joysticks are being picked up by the system as joysticks and that really doesn't help you much. After that point I'm going to get on with uh, some more new features. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, I, I won't have a vote for it but feel free to comment down below, take a look at the GitHub repository as I said which has the issues, see which one of those floats your boat. But yeah I've got a whole bunch of stuff to fix, I think I, I can't look past the bugs right now so I'll fix that and, and we'll sort out what's coming next. Anyway, you can download it now. Uh, the GitHub repository again has the built binaries for the code. There's the wiki page if you, you're stuck on stuff. But if there's something there you don't feel is documented very well, uh, feel free to uh, write up what you'd like to see and send it to me. I could always include it in the wiki. If you've got still got controller issues that you can't fix, let me know, but check the wiki first. I'm trying to build up more and more info about them. Uh, and that's it. Have fun with it. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if there's any problems, etc, etc. And don't forget, uh, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment down below, click on the little bell icon if you can find it, that sort of thing. I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.